Welcome back to Slothbox. This channel is proudly sponsored by Lion Paul Security Services and the Excelsior Sporting Club. This is James Lupton and I'm delighted to be joined with Nikki Rue. Nikki, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about your influence of boxing. Um, it seems to be a massive, massive thing. This this entertainment side of the sport is growing rapidly. Uh, just first of all, tell me how you sort of got into the influencer side of boxing. Uh, so as far as the influencer aspect, I kind of fell into it uh, when I was younger because I started modeling and I had no no concept of growing a following or anything like that. And then it just kind of started to take off, which was really cool. So now it's a little bit more in focus. Um, I mean, it's half of my job title now, but <laughs> as far as the boxing aspect, I've always really loved combat sports. I've been a part of them in various ways since I was a little kid. So when I saw the opportunity to be on an all female card and be trained in specifically boxing, which was very new for me, I, I mean, I didn't really even hesitate. I was just like, yes. What is it for you that excited you about that prospect? Ooh, um, uh, maybe I'm just a masochist. Just punch me in the face, gets me going. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I think I've always really liked athletics and sports as a whole, and just kind of taking up space in things like that because I know I'm very comfortable. Like coming from the family that I do, I'm very comfortable around athletes. I'm very comfortable around just the gym i guess <laughs> so it just it it just felt feels like home i guess and for you, you mentioned obviously your background you have done a bit of combat sports growing up yeah. you've been doing this and that for yourself what is it about boxing that you enjoy <laughs> um when you did start training in boxing and did it overtake what you liked about the other combat sports that you've done previously Ooh. um just so you know for everyone who hears it, the walk me is because we have buttons for the dog uh, just if you guys hear it in the background, um, but that's a great question. I, I think the limitations of boxing are very interesting to me. I don't know if it'll ever surpass my love of grappling and more groundwork. Um, I'm definitely focused more on it right now, but I think where I'm most naturally inclined is to kind of rap like a koala uh but <laughs> i it's it's really cool it's i think boxing is very pure because it's only hitting right it is the most and i don't mean this in any disrespectful way like it, with the most admiration it's the most basic of the combat sports right it's literally just two fists and there's so much honor in that i think because you can't be like like oh look at my hand here's my foot you know, like <laughs> there is there is a lot of honor and integrity that has to come with being limited to just two of your many weapons. And I think that's been really, really cool to become so proficient and almost specialized. Because if we do think of these as all different weapons, I I feel like I'm being trained to be specialized in just these two. So it's almost like having like, I don't know like getting my PhD in it, if that analogy makes sense. No, it does, it does. And obviously, we know training is completely different to fighting. What's it like come fighting? Like the first time you entered that ring, you know, in front of the crowd, what was that like? Was there a buzz for you? Was it nerves? Was it a mixture of both? Um, yes, but not in the way that I think most people expect. The crowd doesn't really affect me. Um. And I, I don't, I've tried to kind of reflect on why. I don't particularly know why. I don't know if it's because I've done like theater and singing and dance and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I'm just used to crowds. But it doesn't really get to me at all. Because in my head, a fight is a fight is a fight, right? My focus isn't so much what the audience is seeing or how they like or the fact that they're there, it's more whether or not I'm going to win. And I, I, I think that's kind of taken away a lot of pressure about like how many eyes are on me because I'm like, 
I don't, I don't care because my goal is always going to be to win regardless of who's watching. Um, but there definitely was nerves the first time being in a ring, partially because of the limitations I mentioned earlier, because it was like, <laughs> if I, one, I was worried about slipping into like autopilot and accidentally like throwing an elbow or grappling around her, which would have been very bad. Cause especially for me, I'm a kicker. So like grappling is first and foremost, but as far as striking goes, I've always been a kicker because I just, I have strong legs. I did dance, I did cheer. Like it, <laughs> it's my first instinct if I'm backed into corners to just straight. So I was, I was really worried about that. And I was really worried about being limited, but it worked out. And I, I feel like a lot of those nerves are just kind of, at least this last fight, those nerves just weren't there anymore. Cause I feel like I'm trained enough that it's clicking into a mode which is really cool. We see a lot of, you know, MMA guys and other combat sport fighters come into boxing and make that transition. Um, obviously at all different levels as well, you know, you've got Francis Ngannou at top level fighting Tyson Fury very soon and all the way down with, you know, there's guys who will, say, be a kickboxing world champion and they go to boxing yeah. or later on in life. How was that transition for yourself and to stay disciplined to not throw a kick like you'd normally do, like you say you're used to? <laughs> Oh gosh, it it's definitely a discipline. I and I know I've told this story before. When I first started training, um, so I've I've mostly sparred with men who are bigger than me. I think part of that um is because that's just who's around me. But I think the other side of it is that my first opponent was 60 pounds heavier than I was. Uh and we knew going into it that she was gonna be a bigger girl. So they just wanted me to have just strength coming at me <laughs> uh, but when I was first training I I legitimately I almost kicked my opponents multiple times and to get that out of it, it was so hard I, I like I said every time I was in a corner I remember this one time like I brought my knee like to my chest ready to kick out and the guy just looks at me and then I looked at him it's like song but we just looked at each other and I was like I'm gonna put this down it's not what we're doing that's my bad. Uh, but it is, it's not as hard anymore. Um, I will say though, like, interestingly enough, I think it's limited my footwork pretty heavily because in my head, I'm like feet on the ground. So it's made me kind of heavy footed, not to be giving away secrets to any future opponents. Um, but I do think it's something that I have to put extra focus on now that I'm used to keeping my feet down to get a little more light-footed. But I think specifically being so quick to kick led me to overcompensate in keeping my feet just planted. So that's been that's been interesting. And I wonder, I don't know, I'm gonna start watching other fighters who have transitioned and see if that's like a common thread between us because I haven't really specifically watched that. But I think that's been the biggest like hindrance toward me. Absolutely. And like you say, a hindrance is certainly the right word because when you when something's so habitual to do something completely different and when you are in yes. fight or flight mode, you know, your your natural instinct is to like say throw a kick or freeze your knee and you, you can't do that. So that must be hard to stay that discipline, but like I say, it gets easier the more you train. Oh, for sure. Especially I know when I first started, because like so when I first saw, like, started fighting with boxers, I guess, uh, in a boxer stance, in my head, I'm like, you're so open. I could just dive. Like, I could just go in there, get you on the ground, and be done with it. And that was so hard, because it also takes so much of your mental focus, right? Because, like, it's it's almost like going somewhere and being it and having so much of your brain go, these are all the things you can't do right now. It's like this ongoing list where I'm like, okay, but I could, the way that their feet are planted, I could just do a little like, little trip, get them on the ground, wrap around. And like, <laughs> it's, that's really hard to see openings that for a different type of fighting, like if we were fighting in real life, for instance, um, it's hard seeing openings where I'm like, I could just kick your ass right now, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> 
What about, I mentioned at the start of the call, the, the rapid growth of influencer boxing. Do you ever see MMA, influencer MMA fights happening? I mean, I would love to. I think, because I, I, I've been asked a few times if I would ever do that. Um, and I would be down with the right opponent. It's once you start throwing in elbows, because like this, this in your knees, right? That's like some of the strongest parts of your body. That's going to do the most damage. A little self-defense tip for anyone watching. If you really want to mess someone up, just get a nice little elbow in there. Um, but once you start throwing in something that's so much more dangerous, right? Like kickboxing, even if it's just kickboxing, you're just adding two more weapons. If we're continuing that arsenal analogy, um, you're just adding two more weapons. The level of damage that we see is so exponentially higher. So it becomes a lot more, I guess, prudent that we keep safety measures up for influencers that are getting involved with it. Like, we would need people training because right now we have some people that are like phenomenal boxers and then we have some people who fight like this. So <laughs> it's as much as training is super important, you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. Whereas I don't, I don't see us being able to get away with it as much with MMA. So I think if it started and started growing, that would be phenomenal. And I can like, I can foresee it potentially being something that takes off. But it, I think it would be a lot more difficult in terms of the level of commitment that we would need to see from all the influencers. I mean, you sort of touched on it a bit there as well, but the dangers of the sport. Um, I want to mention the dangers of boxing. Now, yes. you know, in, you've had a bit of combat sport training yourself when you're younger, but not every influencer has a lot of influencers, especially sort of at the misfits, you know, kingpin level. They're looking at it just as a business and they're thinking, right, I'm going to make a lot of money here. I'm going to go in there for you know, 15, 20 minutes and just have a little dance around. But that's not the case. It's not, you know, it is a sport, but people do get hurt. How dangerous is it for influencers who get involved in this, who have never done this before, who may not train properly, just intentionally doing it for the money? Um, I think it depends, right? So in glove size is going to play a huge role in that. If you have some inexperienced people and we're wearing 16s, like my last two fights were 16 ounce gloves. It is really hard to get knocked out with 16 ounce gloves. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but that is so much more difficult than if we were like 10 ounce gloves, right? So the, some of it does fall, like the safety of it, some of it does fall on just the the platform itself and how they're taking care of their fighters especially if they are so much more knowledgeable than the fighter themselves because like you said there's some fighters that are taking or both of us have said um there's some fighters taking it very seriously who understand the sport who understand what they're doing and there's some that are just here to have a good time make a little bit of money all that <laughs> um so i think in those cases like we always the refs the platforms the people the coaches need to protect the fighters in certain regards as far as fighters who go in untrained you kind of deserve to get punched in the face i i don't like i can't really fathom being like i'm going into a situation where someone is going to hit me like this isn't like a, oh let's see if it escalates like you can't de-escalate things with words this isn't a, like a debate you can't converse I can't imagine going into something being like I know for a fact I am getting punched in the face today but I will see how it goes like I can't <laughs> I if if you're getting hurt because you didn't train hard enough I don't want like I hope everyone stays safe but that's kind of on you you know, I absolutely agree. Um, again, I just want to go back and touch on uh, what I mentioned earlier in terms of the, the growth of the sport. Just how big can you see influence of boxing going? You know, a lot of people compare it to, you know, wrestling, WWE, et cetera, it being a mm -hmm. sports entertainment business. Just how big can it get? Um, I don't really see, I feel like Mean Girls, the limit does not exist. Um, I don't really see, I don't really see it stopping. I mean, I, 
especially with the strikes going on right now and how turbulent Los Angeles is as far as like the film industry. And I know that's not everywhere in the world, right? I understand that we are not everyone, but as far as like, like America's number one export is our media. So with so many movies and writers and just everything kind of on the chopping block right now, self-made content is still growing as a business, right? I know it's been here for a while. I know it's gone through a lot of changes, but it is still growing as a business and it's still incredibly lucrative and it's only going to get bigger as our social platforms grow, as our connections grow, as as people become more, I, I want to say adept at creating things versus just being like, hey guys, right? Um, as things become more cinematic on an individually created content level, I think that industry already is growing exponentially and already has this like endless potential. And when you combine that with the powerhouses we see in sports, I can't really see it stopping as long as, as long as the business side does it correctly. And as long as the influencers are showing up and putting on an actually good fight, I I don't really see a limit to the potential within the industry. And that's, you know, the future of the industry and influencer boxing. For yourself, what do you see in your future in influencer boxing? Um, more wins. Um, <laughs> more belts as well. That would be awesome. Um, I think ultimately I would love to be a like one of the faces of influencer boxing. And I, I'm not trying to have ideas of grandeur, but I mean, we're all in the entertainment industry. We're all a little arrogant. Um, I, I do really hope that I can work hard enough and I can be good enough as an athlete and as an entertainer, because it's both, right? I'm really hoping I can be good enough at both while still remaining true to myself in a way that allows me to become a face within this industry and really represent not only influencers in combat sports, but women in combat sports and women influencers and kind of showcasing, like I've always been very big on being a good example. Even when I was like, even like, <laughs> even when I was younger, when I became a cheerleader, and I had my first little cheer camp and I was with little girls that were like, you're a cheerleader. I was like, this is the most important thing I've ever done. I will be a good example for you. I'm going to teach you values and being a good person. <laughs> like it, it was, it's always been so important to me from such a young age. So being at the level that I hope to be at one day, I would love to be someone that not only is representing the sport and the industry as a whole, but is a positive role model and can have a larger spread impact that tells little girls that you can. And I mean, everyone, right? Because I don't, I don't just want little girls to be good people. I want everyone to be good people, um, but can really be someone that people can look up to and be like, I, I can do sports. I can also be a nerd. I can also do this. Like I, I can be the dynamic individual that I want to be and I can excel and succeed in everything I want to do if I manage my time correctly and work hard enough. Absolutely. One thing I've noticed on every question I've asked you today about your journey in influence of boxing, there's always a smile comes in your face. How much are you enjoying the boxing? It's so fun. <laughs> um, I The community is unreal, uh, which I mean, I think you find in a lot of athletic communities as a whole, but when you start competing, as an athlete and there's just there's just this drive that you see in people and i i love this idea of just everyone wants everyone else to win everyone is trying to pull other people up like i've never been to a boxing gym like a legitimate training to fight fighters kind of boxing gym um i've never been to one that didn't look at beginners or people just starting or people just getting back into fitness and go okay this is where you're at let's get you up like I, it's, it's such a team 
And that's been one of my favorite aspects of it. On top of the fact that I just love challenging my body. I love the sport. It's, it's just, I love the fans, honestly. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> they're so funny. <laughs> um, I've been getting a lot more involved with that side of the community as well. And it's, some of them are very mean, but whatever. Most of them are so funny. <laughs> so I, it's, it's just been such a beautiful journey. Not to sound super like hippy dippy about it, but it's it's just I've had such a positive experience with almost every single person I've interacted with within the boxing, uh influencer boxing, but boxing community as a whole. Fantastic. And just finally, last question from me, Nikki. There's been a bit of talk on social media about you and your future and potential future opponents. And Astrid Wett keeps getting linked with your name. Obviously, she's a Brit. Um, is that a fight you'd like? Is that somebody that you sort of have had a look to go, do you know what, I could fight her in the future? Have you seen it much of Astrid Wett? I have. I will fight her now if she wants that. <laughs> she can. We can spar in LA um, or buy me a ticket to England. Either way. <laughs> no, I I would love to fight her. I I think... It makes sense. Uh, we're the only two women in this sport that have belts. Um, I have two, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but jokes aside, like I, I do think her being the first female influencer to have a belt, and she obviously has a very strong personality, um, which I love to see. And she seems like she's someone who very much stands up for herself. So that means that, like to me, that tells me she kind of has a dog in her in a fight. I would, I think she would be so fun to be in the ring with. I think it would be a fun thing to promote. And I think it just makes sense. I'd love, I'd love it. I'd, yeah, I'm so down. <laughs> Hopefully we get to see that very soon. Come over to England, get the fight made. Let's get it done. Nikki, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having me.